in this episode of Simple Homemade Life, we're going to talk about how meal planning is a really good idea. Oh, and not just a good idea, something that could save your sanity. Okay, really quick programming note here. We're we're inside today because outside yeah. it is so smoky. It's terrible. It's it's like um, we have a friend who says he's going to just hang up a ham on his patio <laughs> and it's going to be smoked. Here, take take a look at this. They say that right now we have the worst air quality in the world. That it's equivalent to smoking a bunch of cigarettes. So we should say it's because of the wildfires. Because of the wildfires. Yeah, it's not we we don't normally have pollution. We got some strange a lot of fires and strange winds. So yeah. anyway, that's the that's the weather report today. But for for meal planning or non-planning, the way we used to do it, the way probably most people would do it would be to sort of around 5 o'clock or I mean right when dinner is supposed to be on, you start thinking about what you're going to have. And maybe even you thought ahead enough that you're at work and um, you're thinking, oh dear, what are we going to have? And so you might, you know, um, stop on the way home and just pick up some fast food. Um, or you might, you know, maybe do a little better and go to the grocery store and get prepared food just to bring home dinner already done. Or what I do when it was my responsibility for dinner, which would be to just poke around the kitchen and <laughs> snack and just keep eating snacks until you're completely full and you've ruined your appetite. And I don't know, maybe then you make something. Or, it's or not a great like, way to go. Everybody eats a bowl of cereal. Yeah, that's or you true. Just, you know, yeah. eat chips and salsa. It just doesn't. Make sense. But then it like it's a horrible feeling. Like for the person that's been in our marriage, it's been Jamie. It's like this terrible feeling. Well, then every day, you know, once you have a family and you've got people that are wondering what you're going to eat for dinner, then it falls to someone, or everybody's like, I don't know, I don't know, and it's just this terrible feeling at like 4:30 or 5. You kind of get a pit in your stomach. You look in the refrigerator, you're like, I don't know what to have. You can't think of something to make. Everything's frozen. It, it just, it's not they're a like, good They're thing. like baby birds with their mouths open, you know. <laughs> Everyone's going to starve. Well, so, so what are some other good reasons to meal plan? Just off the top right. of your head. Right, so I mean, when I started meal planning is when that feeling went away. And that's when I talk about I, it saved my sanity because I hated that feeling. And it just basically help the stress level immensely. But there are other good reasons too, and we kind of hit on a couple of them. You save money because you're not gonna be going to the store buying whatever you happen to want and looks good when you're hungry. So that's gonna- Oreos, yeah. Oreos for dinner. <laughs> Gravy ham, I don't know. Um, you're gonna save money on that. You're also gonna save money because you're not hitting the takeout or going out to eat, which is more expensive. Um, and also you're, the, some things kind of go together. You're going to have less waste. You're going to be using up stuff that you already have, which saves you money, but also helps you not waste as much. So that's, that's a big thing. Yeah. But another really good reason to meal plan is to eat healthier. When you plan out your meals, you can make sure that you're eating a variety of vegetables and, you know, legumes and meat. You can, you can really plan to eat healthier. Um, and sometimes it just happens normally because you're not just grabbing whatever and so you can make sure to have vegetables and things like that so eating healthy is great thing. and another thing it saves on nagging because well, when yeah. you're the person doing the meals it's always like well what's for dinner what's for dinner I and know, you don't I know it's like that. stressful even more stressful when, when you don't know and so as you're going to see in a minute jamie's going to go through um some of these steps on how to make it really easy some of the tools but it's a there's this menu board she uses and so our whole family when she's plan the menu, we can all see days ahead, maybe even a week ahead, what's for dinner. And so I kind of like to know, because I kind of look forward to that. And it's kind of fun that everybody's going to see what we're going to have. And so it, it saves on a ton of questions. Plus, you can kind of look forward to, you know, yeah. whatever that special thing you're going to yeah. have on Thursday night. Well, you still ask the questions. I just <laughs> say, look at the menu. <laughs> In fact, what I'm using, what I've been using for a number of years is this chalkboard and it is has a prime real estate in our dining room so that Brian or anybody can see what we're having for that week's menu. And so your menu planning can be as simple as this and you can just write something down every week and erase it when you're done. And that, that can be your meal planning. Um, I do a couple of things and I change too. So make it your own. Different seasons of life, you're going to do different things. But the first 
there are five steps and the first step is to get a calendar. So you can just print out a free calendar and I'm going to drop a link down below and there's a free calendar that you can get um, in the subscriber library at anorgancottage.com. And then you'll print it out and you'll have your calendars that you can fill in. If you already have a calendar, let's say you use a planner like the flexible planner, which I sell on my site, um, they have monthly and if you're not using the monthly for your calendar, um, I use my phone monthly for the calendar. So then in my planner, my calendar becomes the menu. So you can do a couple of different things, but you do want to have something that you can record it on. And the reason I like to have a main thing that I record it on, in addition to the one that's erased each week, is so that you have a record of what you had. And then it's easy in a few months to just repeat that same thing and you don't even have to come up with new stuff. Now, the other alternative is to take one of these sheets and just magnetize it on, well, <laughs> magnetize, or put a magnet on your refrigerator and people can look at that. So that's an option too. So the second thing you're gonna wanna do, and it's very important, is to check your calendar. I use our phone calendar. We're, uh, we have a family calendar. And on that is listed my things, Brian's things, um, our daughter's things if she's with us. You know, so you want to check your kids' schedules, your spouse's schedule, everybody's schedule so you know what time you're going to be home, when you're going to be home, or if there's a special occasion and you're eating out. Uh, for instance, on this menu that I showed you, I forgot that Wednesday is our anniversary, so we will not be having lamb zucchini on Wednesday, we're going to be going out. So it's important to check your calendar. So the third thing you're going to want to do is to check your refrigerator, freezer, and cupboards. So check what you have and write down. Um, in fact, I'll put a link to the subscriber library again, because in that you can also get pantry checklist, which will help you in writing down what you have. So plan what you have. If you have chicken breasts and you have, um, pork and you have some cans of beans, then it's like plan meals around those things. If you have some head of cauliflower that needs to be used up, put that on your list to plan a meal around. So that's your third thing is you need your, after your calendar and your schedule, check what you have already in your house. So before you actually pick out your recipes using what you have, I suggest a way to make it really easy instead of looking at Monday and being like, oh, what should we have on Monday? Assign a theme to each day of the week. And it just narrows it down a little bit more. So for instance, at the top of Monday, I would just write meatless Monday. And on Tuesday, taco Tuesday. I'm not being very creative here. You can, there's many themes you can do. On Wednesday, I would do international. Uh, Thursday would be something with chicken. So narrow it down a little bit. So when you're thinking what recipe to have, you're kind of have a guideline and you're not just, it's a little bit more easy to come up with something. And so now finally, it's the fifth step and it's time to fill in your meals. Choose your meals for the week. And we've got some helpful things at anorgancottage.com and we'll link to those. One of them is monthly menus. And every month they're seasonal and there's four weeks of menus um, of, that you can just pull from. They are linked to recipes. I also have, um, there is a menu ebook in that subscriber library that I talked about. And I also have a fun um, like menu for a rotisserie week. If you're just gonna have rotisserie chicken, you can plan three or four meals out of the rotisserie chicken. And uh, I think that's separate and I'll drop a link to that. But I did wanna point out one other thing. So when I talk about meal planning, I really only talk about the Monday through Friday because Saturday and Sunday are always easy and that's another way to make it easy on yourself. Just plan for five meals. So Saturdays, whatever your family likes, make it a tradition and that means you repeat it over and over again. So for us, it's burgers and pizza and we alternate because we like both burgers and pizza. So we alternate those. And on Sunday, it's just an on your own. That's a day where we eat up leftovers or it's okay to have that bowl of cereal or the chips and dip or whatever you want. It's on your own. And that's kind of a day that we enjoy. Sometimes we eat something together and sometimes we're just on our own. But make those two days easy and then the whole thing gets easier. So as a final comment, I just wanna say, um, you know, it seems hard when you, when you go from not meal planning at all to thinking in advance like that. 
And I'm the first one to tell you that I started and stopped meal planning many times before it stuck. I would get all the calendars, I'd try to do it, and I think I just tried to do too much at once. And so when I finally just made it stick and, and it really started helping me was when I used these tips, these five steps, and really tried to make it something uh, that was doable. And if you do that and you make it doable and you don't put a lot of pressure on yourself, it gets easier and easier and pretty soon you're gonna be wondering why you never did it. Okay, let's head down to the farmhouse now and we're gonna share some things that we've never heard anyone talk about with remodeling. Okay, here's the thing that we actually have never heard other remodelers talk about and it's it has to do with what they listen to while they're working. I mean, it's, you know, it's classic to have like the worksite radio turn to, um, FM, which we do sometimes, but a lot of times you're kind of off working by yourself. And so we'd, we'd sort of done the podcast thing and we really got into listening to recorded books. And what's really interesting is, first of all, it gets this story going in your mind so you can even be measuring and working on stuff and it's okay, you're following the narrative. Secondly, it's kind of entertaining because it kind of keeps your mind engaged with the story while you're doing these mindless, usually dirty tasks but also it's funny that a part of the house will become associated with a particular novel so what while i was doing for example um i was doing the very difficult work of putting down the um the duroc the that concrete board in the in the bathroom for the tile i was listening to the born identity um which is this this really intense spy thriller with a lot of violence and but i i would try to alternate between a really old book and a new one. So then I would listen to like an old um, an old classic and then I would listen to like one from maybe just 80 years ago, you know, Code of the Worcesters. And then I listened to something from Michael Crichton. Um, I was actually, it was interesting to listen to the Andromeda Strain while COVID was breaking out. So anyway, those are, those are kind of some of the books. Um, I just listened to one from the 1800s and now I've got a, um, I've just a downloaded a spy thriller I'd never heard of. So hopefully that's gonna get me through. Um, attaching wood to the ceiling. Well, I haven't been here quite as much as Brian, so I don't have the number of books read that he's listened to while um, working here. But I have three that I can remember and specific places that I was working on. So I was doing uh, the refinishing of the dresser that's going to be our bathroom vanity, and I was listening to a book called Resistance Women during that, and it was very good. I highly recommend it. It will probably be on my best of list. And it's a story, um, it's one of my favorites when it's a historical fiction, meaning they took real people and then they created a story around things that actually happened. So it's this group of women and their husbands who were doing whatever they could to resist the Nazis as the, um, in Germany as the war was starting. So it's a little bit different from World War II things that I've read in the past, so it was very good. Um, another book that I listened to while I was painting the bathroom walls was a book, a fun book called Harry's Trees. And it's by an author I've read before that I liked, um, John Cohen. He also wrote The Man in the Window, which is a great book too. And so this was a fun read that uh, it was perfect for passing the time about a widower who meets a widow and the story about how they help each other. Um, and then the last book I can think about is the most recent book I read, it's called Conjure Women. And I listened to that while we we're working on the tile. And it's a fascinating book again, another historical, um, actually it's just fiction set in history, so there's no real people in this one, but fascinating about slaves and uh, after, like after the war, it kind of hops back and forth in time, but after the Civil War, and they still stayed on their plantation and they ran it themselves, um, they weren't discovered. So it was a fascinating story, really kind of fun. So I, I love audiobooks. I listen to them while I'm gardening too, but it is a great way to pass the time. And so if you're remodeling, I highly recommend it. Well, that is it uh, for this episode. Um, thank you for watching. If you haven't yet, please hit the, the like button and also subscribe so you do not miss our next episode where we're gonna be talking about the top five preserving preserving tips for the end of the season. I wondered if you were going to get that. that right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, these are these are some of my best, so you want to you want to get that. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.